environment, economy, uh, social, social issues uh, are synonymous with sustainability. And it's one of the challenges that sustainability itself is this term that's thrown around and used a lot but not clearly understood. So for me it's important because it really paints, helps to paint the way to a more prosperous, uh, prosperous future for, for businesses, for communities, for NGOs. And uh, having that clear understanding of, of, of what sustainability is, of what success is for your organization or community is, is critical if we're, gonna, if we're gonna figure out how we're gonna move in that direction. I think a lot of the sustainability stuff is simple. Um, people tend to make it more complicated than it needs to be because we're used to making decisions a certain way. You know, we're, we, we, like, we like our routines and normal patterns. We don't like to break out of them. And that's what the sustainability challenge that we're facing is asking us to do. It's saying, can, can we step up to the plate and do better than we are currently doing as, as humans living on this planet? So in terms of the rate of change for the challenges that we're facing, I mean, let's talk about the challenges for a second. We have um, unprecedented, unprecedented growth, population growth around the world. We have increasing demand for resources, for, for nature's uh, ecosystem services, as many people call them, clean water, fresh air, uh, materials, forest, fish, those types of things. So on one, that's on, on, one, on one side of the scale. On the other side, we have this increasing demand for those resources. So right now, if we look at the average North American um, ma mode of consumption, and you put it all together using this ecological footprint term, uh, we will need another three or four planets for everyone to live at the same standard of living that the average North American has. In terms of rate of change, no, we need to, we need to pick up the rate of change. And, and for me, the challenge is not only about uh, technology, it's, it's really the challenge we're facing is really about leadership. We have the, a lot of the technical solutions. Uh, we, have, uh, we have a lot of the answers. We've got uh, people who are willing to step up to the plate. We need leaders who are going to emerge and, and step up and, and, and take on that challenge. So it, it's a really a leadership gap that we have right now. It's not a technological gap, uh, it's, it's a leadership one. You know, new neighborhoods that are being developed, they're being, a lot of them are being developed and built in ways that are not sustainable. Uh, it, there's more and more urban sprawl that, that's creating more and more demand for resources and, and at the other end of the pipe, at the other end of that, there's more and more pollution. Uh, more and more economic challenges that, that, uh, that come out of that type of development. So being able to look at the neighborhood is, is, is really critical, critical if we're going to address the sustainability challenges we're facing. And I, I'd also say that the neighborhood offers a place to comfortably engage people in a meaningful conversation about what the future can hold for them. How, how can we create a better world together? So these, these neighborhoods offer an opportunity for, for us to help and for others to help translate what those broad high-level municipal sustainability plans mean. So a lot of communities have these goals and strategies that talk about waste reduction and energy. But what does that mean in, in your neighborhood? What does it mean for businesses, for you at home, for the role that the municipal government plays, for the role that other service providers play? And that's what this neighborhood project, you know, the neighborhood thought leaders piece is about, is, is beginning to explore that and say, look, can we design, can we, not only can we design our neighborhoods in a much better way, and we know we can, and a lot of cities uh, in Canada are doing that, and Calgary is working on that too. There's a number of good examples in Alberta. You have, um, in, down in Okotoks, you have Drake's Landing. Uh, you have Emerald Hills up in Strathcona County. You have some new projects that are coming on, on board in Edmonton. So there's a lot of little sort of um, demonstration projects that, that, that really showed that there's a, a new way of designing our communities. As uh, neighborhoods are trying to transition to a more sustainable model, be, there will be a number of challenges. Right now, we have, um, you know, we have a significant amount of infrastructure of buildings of neighborhoods that have been created. So uh, retrofitting those uh, up to a degree where they're highly energy efficient, uh, bringing in the different types of, of services and creating parks so there's more walkability, uh, that, that, takes, that takes time. We spend a lot of our time running around busy working uh, worrying about worrying about things, buying things, accumulating more stuff, and that's resulted in sort of a decrease in the the, the quality of life and in, in the general happiness of the population. In Europe, in the UK, they've done some great work on uh, wealth and happiness. So I would say one of the trade-offs that we can expect is that is that we would be a little less busy than we are right now. So for some people who are workaholics, that might be a bit of a, a challenge, but. And that would also mean that our incomes uh, might also go down a bit too. 
but what that what that creates is an opportunity for people to to reconnect with uh, with others in their neighborhoods in in their lives and spend more time with them I think some of the other some of the other trade-offs is that we're not you know we won't always have the next the next newest gadget um, we're we're driven right now um, and it's part of our biology but we're driven we're driven to consume in many ways we need to have the the latest iPhone uh, the, the next fanciest car uh, and that 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 mode of consumption uh, that that we exist with right now is, is something that is 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 quite challenging one of the big challenges is is energy and energy consumption our, our most of our buildings are very energy inefficient and there are good opportunities now to uh, retrofit your uh, buildings there's some different incentives that are that are out there um, so that's 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 one um, that's one way of uh, trying to adjust the uh, the challenges in the short term I think Alberta is doing really well uh, with respect to sustainability, looking at other municipal governments and communities across the country. Uh, a number of, of cities have invested in, uh, in creating sustainability departments, have provided training to staff, and we're seeing the creation of new, uh, new neighbourhoods. We're seeing demonstration projects like Ride the Wind here in Calgary or Drake's Landing down in Okotoks. Um, or up in Edmonton with how they deal with waste, with wastewater and are recycling lots of their wastewater for industrial purposes. So uh, Alberta is doing, I think Alberta is doing very well, uh, especially at the, at the municipal uh, level. The other part of that is that it's not only the municipal government's responsibility. Uh, businesses that operate in, in those neighborhoods are also responsible and, and members of the public are too. You know, we spend we spend now a significant amount of our time in front of the television and the relationships that exist which came out through the survey as well with Albertans that they don't know their neighbors anymore they don't have that connection with their neighbors um, and that's that deteriorating deteriorating sense of um, of trust if you will uh, is 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 also one of the the barriers that we identified in in the surveys so how can we bring people back together so that we can address those those solutions we can get people more involved at the neighborhood level, at the community level, by creating opportunities for them to come out and have meaningful dialogues about what they would like to see in their neighborhoods. So right now, planning, for example, uh, you have multiple players that offer different services at, at the neighborhood and community scale. Um, you have people who are providing health services, you have municipal government who's providing different types of infrastructure services. Uh, you have other, uh, perhaps low-income housing or other types of social services. So there are all these different things that are taking place and they're not always coordinated. Um, so one of the part of getting, part of the, the uh, approach of getting people out is to have meaningful conversations about how they can uh, bring those together and provide better services at a neighborhood scale. One of the encouraging ones that I've seen, and I wouldn't say it's, it's spread right across the industry, but there is more of an awareness that, uh, from, from developers that building in a way that is green or sustainable uh, has, has advantages. So there are more and more developers who are stepping up to the plate, not only doing the small incremental things like water efficiency and energy efficiency, but really starting to ask some questions around how they design their neighborhoods and how they can design them in a different way. I think in Al Alberta there are a lot of opportunities, the same as in other provinces, to do, to do better. Um, one of them is by really changing the way that we plan and make decisions. Most of our planning, uh, I would say probably 98% of it, is based, on, is based on forecasting, which means we look at past trends uh, and we project what the, prob what the uh, solutions will be over the course of the next couple of years. Um, the newer model of planning that more and more organizations are starting to use is based on backcasting. And by that I mean we start with clearly defining what success is, in our case from a sustainability perspective, assessing where we are as an organization or community or neighborhood, and then saying, okay, if that's what success is, this is where we are, these are our problems, then how are we going to bridge that gap between the two? So it, it, it sounds simple, but it's a very different way of, uh, of planning. And I think that's one of the biggest challenges that Alberta uh, and, and other, other provinces face, is that they need to really uh, wrap their heads around uh, what success is for them uh, as, as a province, as communities, as businesses. 
we spent a, a lot of time talking with uh, talking with Albertans. So we set up uh, an online forum in which we engaged in dialogue with uh, with hundreds of Albertans. We created a survey, and then we also went went out and interviewed different experts from across the country and looked at best practices in terms of neighborhood planning. So what we found in that research was actually it was, it was actually very encouraging. And it, this is a thought leader's piece, so it's not a statistically valid. We didn't ask every single Albertan what they thought. Uh, but we did get a, a really strong consensus about the key characteristics of sustainable neighborhoods. Social well-being was one of the first um, themes that came out of the interviews and survey questions. So what, what this means is that, again, uh, like with Mr. Mr. Rogers, it's creating a feeling of, of well-being, creating a, a sense of belonging, if you will. Um, it was, there, there were a lot of responses that people said, I, you know, people don't know their neighbors that well. Uh, especially in, in places where they, they don't walk, where you have to get in your car to drive and do everything. Governance was another key theme that came out of the discussion. So people, not, not only did they, they talk about uh, you know, getting to know their neighbours more, but actually being involved in, in participating in decision making. So this, this is beyond sort of electing your local official. This really means volunteering, uh, being involved in your community association, being involved in, in different, uh, your different neighbourhood uh, organizations um, and and having a say in, in in how your how your organization is shaped. A third key theme that came out of this was active uh, convenient and green transportation and you know as, as it implies what we mean by this and, and this this is one of the if we go back to the uh, the slide or the main sort of uh, uh, cloud diagram walkability was 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 sort of the, the biggest thing that came out of the survey results where people wanted to be able to walk around. Um, so it's, it, it's represented here again. Public transportation that, that is linking uh, people between different neighborhoods so that they can access, access uh, services easily without having to get in the car. The fourth one, fourth sort of theme that came out of this uh, looked at nature and, and thriving ecosystems, uh, which includes uh, parks and, and green spaces. So we've kind of put them together. Um, what what, the, what this uh, what some of the experts said here, which was quite interesting, and, and it did it did vary, is that if we're building new stuff, it shouldn't be built on sensitive natural ecosystems, and and there are some regulations that do uh, protect uh, protect different natural ecosystems. The economy itself, um, when this one here was interesting because they looked at both the uh, local economy and uh, also the economy in general. So people wanted to have uh, good in employment. Uh, they they wanted to, a lot of a lot of people wanted to be able to work within within their neighborhoods, um, but they also wanted to have access to work. So if it wasn't directly in their neighborhood, it would be easily easily accessible. This is the interesting, sort of an interesting one, and uh, I, w I was actually a little surprised to see that there was quite a bit of support for density in the survey responses. Uh, not everyone, well, I wouldn't say there was 100% unanimity here, um, and I think there's there's still confusion about what. Um, a nice sort of high medium dense neighborhood can can look like um, compact beautiful spaces that allow for that social inter interaction and also allow for privacy um, are, are something that people are, are, are looking for design around again around people not cars and balance with appropriate green spatial spaces also balance with the appropriate transportation linkages too the the seventh one was related to services uh, services themselves so people really, and again, this goes back to you know walkability. They wanted to be able to have the services uh, within within an appropriate distance uh, from public transportation, from uh, from a, and from a walkability perspective. So these included a wide variety of things: shopping, uh, recreation, healthcare, uh, work, etc. One of the one of the last ones relates to diversity. So here, the diversity both in terms of, of the people, uh, in terms of range of incomes. The number of communities that uh, have very, uh, you know, type of gated communities, if you will, where it's a, a certain income level that in, in, that you need to, to get in, essentially. Part of the challenge for Al Alberta and for every other province in this country is is to really take a hard look at the direction that we're heading with our industries, uh, with the services that we're offering, and ask ourselves how we can offer these in a way that will move us in a sustainable direction. And what I mean by that is that it will prevent uh, more problems from, uh, from coming back to, to bite us, if you will. Uh, we have a huge opportunity here in Alberta in particular 
to, to invest in a sustainable future. And we've seen glimpses in, of that in a number of communities and municipal projects. Thank you.